Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. He's a retired physician and also founder of HealthWatch USA. Good morning, Dr. K. Uh, good morning, Jack. Good to have you on with us this morning. Now, schools open in person, and you are indicating here in the notes you sent me, classes might be problematic. Explain that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're in a worse situation now, really, than what we were last year. Too many of our children are unvaccinated. Those under 12 aren't even eligible for a vaccine yet. This virus is more than twice as infectious. It creates a thousand times more virons than the previous variants. And we're already getting reports out of the Mississippi Health Department and late last night out of the Oklahoma Health Department that this virus is infecting young kids. They are winding up in the hospital and in the ICU. Mississippi reported seven children in the hospital, well, seven children in the hospital and ICU, and two of those were on the vent. So this is very problematic. As we said last August, schools need to get set up to deal with this long term. This means fixing their ventilation. It means testing everybody, whether you're vaccinated or not, twice weekly. It means wearing masks, potting, social distancing, and having your hybrid options, because that will allow you to reduce class sizes. And if someone is able to take school from home, that option should be there. These are going to need to be permanent changes. Remember, this virus is rapidly mutating. We already have two other variants out there, both Kappa and Lambda, that I'm afraid are just waiting their turn. So we need to take action, but we also need to take action that changes our infrastructure to live with this virus. These advisements, Jack, we talked about last year, I believe it was in August. So as a society, we need to get together and fight this thing. Now, some of these, I know there's going to be pushback on this deal from parents and others, but some of these schools that you mentioned in this deep south are really doing very poorly with getting people vaccinated, aren't they? Well, they are. And this virus will just spread. And you need to realize that if everybody was vaccinated, there'd be a very low viral load in the community. So the vaccine would be kind of a shield of armor that you would just use if you needed to. Right now, people are pretending like this virus isn't here. It's going to spread like wildfire. And those that are vaccinated are going to be exposed to a very high viral load. Remember, it's a numbers game. Masks reduce the viral load. It reduces the viral load in those that are vaccinated. And the reports that we're getting are that there are a lot of breakthrough infections. Now, I don't mean everybody, but there may be up to at least 40% of people who have gotten the vaccine could still acquire and spread the virus. Their infections may not be as severe. They may not get in the hospital. Certainly the data on deaths look great, not as likely to die. That's a huge plus. Yep. So get vaccinated. But even asymptomatic individuals are at some risk for the cardiovascular involvement of this virus. This is something you want to avoid. So everyone needs to wear masks. And I would go back to advisements that we had similar to last year during the winter surge. Now you say you've got a statement to make about vaccinated people wearing masks. What is that? Well, definitely. They also need to wear masks. Number one is you can't tell who's vaccinated and who's not. Number two, you want to decrease your viral load. Remember, a lot of the data we're seeing on vaccinated people do well. Some of those are from countries where everybody's wearing a mask. And masks decrease the viral load, making it less likely for you to get infected. And if you do get infected, less likely to wind up in the hospital or die. And, and this is important. And also, it will decrease the dangers of this virus mutating. We need to stop the spread and to stop its mutations. Otherwise, this virus is going to mutate completely out of our vaccine's efficacy. I mean, I think right now it's about one step away from doing that. Yeah. So we need to start taking this virus seriously. Are you anticipating more mandates from the governor? I would hope so. 
or at least strong advisements, whether or not they're mandates at this point. The people are, I mean, no one's following anything. They're not wearing masks in any of the box stores. Everybody's pretending like it's just life as usual, and it's not. The cases are spiking. Positivity rates, I believe, are going to be over 7% today. I think that it is really imperative that people go back to the behavior that they had over the Christmas surge, because this virus is much more infectious. And remember, if you just do the math, your chances of now catching an infection, that means testing positive, if you're 40% or 30% less efficacy of the vaccine, and that's 30 percentage points less efficacy, going from 94 down to around 60, and you have a virus that's twice as infectious, you're just about in the same boat you were before as far as acquiring the virus. But hopefully, and our data is showing, that your infection won't be one that will be as severe. Even out-of-hospital infections can create severe long-term problems for individuals. So you want to avoid this virus. By the, Very important. By the way, your guest from Peru, the doctor down in Peru on Friday, was really, really good. Well, thank you, Jack. You have to realize that our group uses a number of infectious disease experts from around the world to really get a handle on what's happening and what they're doing. And that's how we've been staying ahead, for example, the CDC. We warned of the Delta variant on this show on June the 3rd. Several weeks ago, we advised people to get N95 masks. So it, it allows us to stay, I think, ahead of the curve. And all of these presentations that we've had so far, at least the major ones, the viewers can watch at healthconference.org. They are posted online, and you'll get a good idea of what's going on in other nations. Great. Fantastic. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.